Hello and welcome to Baccarat's webinar on refrigerant leak events. And to introduce myself, my name is Jason Ayres. I'm application support engineer for the Baccarat group. I have over 25 years experience in the refrigeration industry, helping our customers reduce their refrigerant and energy spend. Baccarat make a range of best in class refrigerant leak detection solutions. These are deployed worldwide in hundreds of applications. The aims are to reduce refrigerant emissions, assist with safety compliance, help in occupied space leak detection scenarios like hotels, and also a range of portable and handheld leak detection devices. Backrack are also experts in refrigerant management. We have a range of software solutions to help our customers track refrigerant usage, assist with refrigerant leak detection reduction strategies and help with compliant reporting, be it EPA 608, CARB or FGAS. So what makes us experts in leak event analysis? Well, we've had over 30 years of connected solutions, gathering data from refrigerant leak detection devices all over the world and bringing that data back for analysis. We have well over 3 billion monitored samples here at our data centers, which means that we are unrivaled in understanding leak events, profiles and analysis. And we'd love to share some of that knowledge with you today. Through the next section of this webinar, we're going to get to the nitty gritty on refrigerant leak events. How do they occur? What's a pattern of them? Do they come and go to help you Use the tools and services available to help reduce your refrigerant usage and emissions. So why do refrigerant leaks occur? Well, we are dealing with a system that has changes in temperature, pressures and vibrations. All these contribute to refrigerant leaks. In a lesser capacity, leaks appear elsewhere in the system. Service runs where there's vibrational changes or in some rare instances, unintentional leaks. This makes finding refrigerant leaks a time consuming and tricky activity. Leaks do come and go and spending the time to find them is time consuming, especially for your team of service engineers. So before we look at the leak event analysis in more detail, a little explanation. Our analysis of over 3 billion leak events is across all refrigerant classifications be it HFCs, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and also hydrocarbons. Regardless of the refrigerant classification, they all demonstrate the same types of leak events and patterns. As part of the response to leak events, we categorize the levels into alert, alarm, and critical, depending on the response. The alert level is the early warning indication of a pending refrigerant leak. For HFCs, we're looking in the range of 10 to 40 parts per million. At this level, leaks are going to be more difficult to find, but identification and rectification will mitigate any refrigerant loss or system performance. The alarm threshold is usually the call for an engineer to attend site. For HFCs, we're looking at the range of 80 to 100 parts per million. At this level, the leak again is still small, but should be easier for the engineer to find, identify and fix. This should keep refrigerant usage and loss to a minimum without effect on system performance. The top level of alarm is critical. This is usually set for compliance purposes, safety purposes, or if this level is breached, it indicates a sizable leak on site. If the critical level is breached, it may operate local beacon sounders to alert personnel to a high refrigerant emission, dry fans, but it's an immediate action required for attendance by the service engineer. Through our analysis of over 3 billion leak events, we have been able to categorize these leak events into five common categories, and we'd love to share those with you now. So what are the top five common leak events? Well, we've been able to categorize them into the following areas. The overnighter, typically characterized by a difficult to detect leak during the day that builds up overnight due to a lack of airflow. The volcano, a leak that starts off small, that can continue for a period of time that if not fixed early, will erupt into a large refrigerant emission. The defroster, 
a leak that comes and goes on a predetermined time. The defroster can be spotted only when the coil is on a defrost and we usually found inside a walk-in, cooler box or refrigerated display case. The undercover, a difficult to find leak that needs time and dedication by the engineer to find. The repeater, this is characterized by a leak event that has been initially rectified, but once rectified, a smaller leak is then detected later on. So let's look at some leak patterns in more detail. This is an example of the overnighter. What we have here is a walking cooler over a seven day period and the PPM values as recorded by the on-site refrigerant gas detection system. If you look at the pattern of the leak in detail, you can see that during the nighttime period, so really from 11 p.m. onwards to around 6 a.m. the next day, the magnitude and PPM values climb up dramatically to the six to 700 PPM. In the morning, the PPM values drop away rapidly. This is when people start using the cold room and as they access it to take out goods, the PPM values drop away as the refrigerant dissipates. The pattern is then repeated night after night after night, indicating a very small leak on the coil itself that builds up when the cold store is closed and inactive. You can clearly see the leak rise and fall. If I was an engineer and I was attending site during the day with my handheld leak detector, I may not detect the leak and then question the efficacy of the leak detector. When we visualize the leak, you can clearly see the dynamics of it, the cause, the effect, and when you should be in there trying to find the leak. This type of leak is going to be a difficult one to find. It is going to be very small, but with some perseverance and some visualization of the leak, it will be found and rectified. It may not even contribute to any refrigerant loss or any system performance, thus mitigating any costs for loss of refrigerant and improving the performance of the system. Not all leaks contribute to refrigerant added. Our whole aim is to detect these leaks early on before a system performance issue, thus improving the uptime and availability of the assets that we control. And this is just looking at that same leak pattern in a little bit more detail over a 12 hour period. What you can clearly see from 9 p.m. the PPM values rise as that walking cooler is used less and less. Then over the overnight period between midnight and 6 a.m. when it is completely closed, the PPM values rise. The values that we can see on there up to 200 ppm are not large, but even though they are not huge ppm values, a leak is there and if we can identify it and rectify it quickly and easily, we will reduce refrigerant loss immensely. You can see from 6 a.m. 6 a.m. onwards, the ppm values disappear as that asset is used by store staff moving goods in and out of it. And here we have another example of a leak inside a walk-in box or cold store. Again, you can see the pattern. The PPM values rising during the nighttime period when the asset is not used and closed and dropping away during the day as the asset is used and the PPM values dissipate with airflow. Because the leak wasn't rectified early on in the process when the PPM values were down between the 1 to 500 PPM alarm levels, that leak has gone on and on. And as time has continued and temperature and vibration around the evaporator coil has increased, the leak pattern and magnitude has increased until we get to a point where we're breaching the very highest alarm level, the 800 parts per million, which signifies a large refrigerant loss. Again, visualizing the leak pattern adds a thousand words to the story. If the engineer had fixed the leak and identified it sooner within the process, the refrigerant usage and loss could have been less. And also the asset may not have had a performance issue that meant that stock could be on the line in terms of spoilage. This type of leak pattern we see over and over again in walk-in boxes and cold store situations where a small leak builds up overnight and dissipates during the day. 
In this instance, you can see once a coil was replaced, the PPM values disappear. This shows the benefit of the ongoing monitoring system. The leak detection on site, making sure that the fix to the asset was correct and we see no further PPM values indicating any ongoing leak from that system. And finally, here's another example of the overnighter. Again, another cold store walk-in box where the PPM values build up over the nighttime period when that door is closed and the air and PPM values rise. The pattern shown here is fantastic. Over the period when the cold store is closed, the PPMs rise and rise and rise. The peak value at two to 300 parts per million, once that door is open, the air rushes out and thus the refrigerant. If an engineer attends during the day, he may struggle to find that leak without an accurate handheld leak detector or spending the time to find a very small leak on the coil. The visualization of the leak in this form greatly aids the refrigeration maintainer in identifying and fixing leaks. Our records also show that even though these PPM values continued, it didn't warrant any adding of refrigerant. Very low PPM values being detected by a sophisticated on-site leak detection system, coupled with the smart monitoring that you can see here, ensures that refrigerant losses are kept to a minimum. So let's look at another example of a leak event. This is the volcano, your more classic leak pattern. Something that starts off small, that develops into a large refrigerant emission. This example is a display case on a shop floor in a food retail application. You can see the leak developing at 6 a.m. in the morning at lowish levels between 100 to 500 ppm. At that point, a refrigeration engineer really should be in attendance. Our recommendation is any alarm level over 50 ppm should be the call to arms for someone to attend. As you can see, as we get later on in the afternoon, the values and PPM readings increase dramatically. A sizable refrigerant leak has occurred in this scenario. You can see the PPMs top out at 3000 parts per million. That's a maximum reading of the refrigerant gas detection system. And it's not until later on the next day that the leak is rectified and the system brought back down to operating conditions. This was a channel of leak detection coverage on a display case on the sales floor. We also saw this pattern on other channels at bait at a lesser level, reaffirming the leak that was occurring. And here's another example of the volcano leak pattern in a walk-in box stroke cold store. You can see the leak starting just over the 50 ppm values in the middle of October and continued on for another month. In this scenario, the refrigeration engineer on site struggled to find the initial leak. Maybe it was a lack of time, not the right tool for the job, or not understanding the time required to find small refrigerant leaks. However, after much persuasion and talking to the engineer, the leak was finally found and rectified. Again, it was another evaporator cold store coil and the leak was small. But as the leak was left for that long period of time, the amount of refrigerant loss increased. If the leak had been detected earlier on, refrigerant loss could have been kept at a minimum or not at all. And here's an example of our third leak pattern, the defroster. In a food retail application, most assets, so the display cases and cold stores, have a defrost schedule built into them to ensure no buildup of ice on the coil. The defrosting schedule is pre-programmed into the controller and typically set for six to eight hours defrosting operation. During the defrost period, there's a rapid change in temperature and pressure, especially on the evaporator coil, which can contribute to leaks. The example that you can see on the screen is a classic leak during a defrost period. You can clearly see a repeating pattern of a leak appearing and disappearing on a timely basis. You see a higher PPM value at the start of the defrost period when the heat and the coil expands. And as the system comes off defrost and it goes back into the cooling effect on the refrigeration system, 
the metalwork contracts and thus the leak disappears. If an engineer tended outside the defrost period looking for a leak, he may not detect it with his handheld gas detector. The visualisation of the leak along with the repeatability of the pattern helps identify when the leak occurs. If you were to place this image in front of any good refrigeration engineer, he would be able to identify this pattern along with the refrigeration defrost cycle. Placing the fixture on a manual defrost and then doing the leak check would help identify a very small leak. Again, the leak may not have contributed to a loss of system performance or a refrigerant loss, but the aim of the low level leak detection system along with the smart monitoring mitigates this. And here we see the defrosting event in a little bit more detail over a shorter time period. You can see the leak occur for a two hour period as the system is on the defrost cycle. And once the refrigeration effect is back in and the system's back down to the cooling mode, the leak disappears. The PPM values you are seeing are very low indeed, indicating a very small leak. This makes early leak detection imperative to good system performance and improving the uptime of and availability of the asset. And here is another example of a defrost leak. The example here is another walk-in cooler, but also it could be a refrigerated display case on the sales floor. Again, you can see a pattern in the leak. There is a regularity with the PPM values that are just breaching the lowest level of 50 PPM. Again, outside this period, the leak may not be detected by the engineer. So being able to visualize the leak over a period of time aids and helps the engineer in rectifying the leak on site. And here is our next leak pattern, the undercover. In the following examples, perseverance by the refrigeration engineer and utilizing the data and visualization of the graphics aid identifying the leak. The leak may not be in an obvious location, hence time, and perseverance is required. The example you see here is a very, very small leak on an evaporator control valve. This is located on the roof of the cold store. Below the control valve is a sample point for the on-site gas detection system. The leak was detected by the gas detection system in August, but it wasn't rectified until a couple of months later by the local refrigeration engineer. Comments on the efficacy of the gas detection system was questioned and you can see some gaps in the alarm data. At this point, we ask the engineer to remove the hose from the gas detection system to prove the efficacy of the system. When he removed the hose from beneath the gas detector, and thus it was sampling air in that local vicinity and not the coal store, the PPM values went away. When he plugged the hose back in and the system was sampling from the coal store area, the readings came back. This helped educate and pinpoint the engineer in the correct direction. Again, during this period, there was no loss of system performance, no temperature alarms from the fixture, and no low level leak events. After much perseverance and dedication by the engineer, he found a very, very small leak on the solenoid valve as pictured. Once the engineer replaced the solenoid control valve, the leak disappeared. This was a great exercise with using resources of the Bacharach team and the on-site refrigeration engineer to find a very small leak. And here is another example, a refrigerated leak being detected on the sales floor. The leak detection coverage in this example was picking up key points across the sales floor to detect leaking refrigerant from display cases. Time was required by the engineer to triangulate where the leak was occurring and which individual display case was contributing to the refrigerant leak being detected. Due to the way that the refrigerant disperses around the cell floor, the PPM values that were being detected were very low indeed. Even though those PPM values were low, due to the volume and size of the cell floor, the leak was large. Having leak detection on the cell floor helped identify a leak that could have kept on going and going and going. The leak was identified in the display case, the valve was replaced, refrigerant was added to the system and the leak disappeared. In this scenario, good coverage of leak detection within the retail environment, coupled with the smart monitoring system, reduce the amount of refrigerant that needed to be added. And here we have another example around the refrigeration racks. 
The two charts you can see are two individual channels of leak detection, one on rack A and one on rack B. Refrigerant doesn't stay in one place, it moves around due to airflow. Having the leak detected on two channels that are close by helps reassure the service engineer that a leak is on the system. It also shows the accuracy of the leak detection system as well for detecting low level refrigerant leaks. Once the leak was rectified, the PPM values disappeared and the system was back in full operation. And here is another example of an undercover. The two leak charts you can see here are two separate channels of leak detection covering a sales floor. What you can see on these charts is the pattern, magnitude and style of the leaks are exactly the same. As both channels are on the sales floor, first thoughts is you have a leak on one of the refrigerated display cases. But in this scenario, it wasn't. The main HVAC system that's on the roof had a leak and this refrigerant was being pumped around the store predominantly on the sales floor and thus the gas detection was detecting this. Time spent by the engineer to work out where the exact leak was reduced the amount of refrigerant added to the system. Again, you need to sometimes look outside the box in terms of where refrigerant leaks are. The system may be detecting refrigerant in one area, but there may be other services, high level pipe work and systems that may be influencing where that leak is occurring. And our final example of an undercover leak on a retail refrigeration rack. Again, a very low level of leaks detected, just over 30 parts per million. Due to the small nature of the leak, time was required by the engineer to identify it. And once the leak was repaired by the engineer, the leak detection system PPM values disappeared. And here is our final leak event example, the repeater. In these examples, a leak has been found and rectified. We can clearly see a few days later PPMs being detected again from the same asset. This indicates the original leak wasn't fixed correctly. Having the on-site leak detection system and the smart monitoring helped pick this up. A return to site by the refrigeration engineer to rectify the fault correctly mitigated any further refrigerant loss. Having the on-site leak detection system permanently monitoring the assets help prevent further refrigerant losses from the system. So that's our top five common leak event analysis. The overnighter, the volcano, the defroster, the undercover, and the repeater. Typical leak patterns identified from reviewing over 3 billion refrigerant leak events. So why is it important to have an on-site leak detection system covering all your major assets connected to remote smart monitoring system. The benefits of the leak detection system touch all parts of the business. Ultimately, reduction in refrigerant usage is key. Reducing refrigerant usage saves money. With less than the optimum amount of refrigerant in the system, energy is increased. Ensuring the right amount of refrigerant is in the system at all times helps keep energy costs to a minimum. With increasing regulations targeting refrigerants, especially high GWP refrigerants and ones that affect the ozone, having a fixed leak detection system and early warning to alarms is imperative. Reducing costs from refrigerant usage increases profit margins. In a competitive retail landscape, this is key. So how can Baccarat help you with your refrigerant management strategy? Baccarat have a range of hardware and software solutions to help you with your needs. So Baccarat can help you in your refrigerant management needs and strategy in two ways. We have industry leading fixed and portable refrigerant detection devices, as well as a comprehensive refrigerant management software, helping you reduce your operating costs, tracking and compliance needs, all around enterprise management. Whether you're managing a single site or an enterprise of over a thousand sites, Baccarat's software and hardware solutions are scalable for all your needs. We also have a knowledgeable and dedicated team to help you on your refrigerant management journey. Baccarat leads the industry in fixed leak detection systems. Our infrared leak detection devices can detect leak in refrigerant down to one ppm. The flexibility in the leak detection systems means we can detect from one to 16 channels 
or expand further up to 48 dependent on the size of the installation. And over 60 different gases being detected means that our systems are flexible and future-proofed to all your refrigerant leak detection needs. To complement our range of fixed leak detection systems, Backrack also have a vast range of portable leak detection devices. Again, industry leading refrigerant leak detection down to 1 ppm offers a powerful and accurate tool to detect leak in refrigerant. The portable gas detector is the perfect tool for any service engineer. Being able to leak inspect an entire system easily, quickly and effectively for refrigerant leaks is key. And thank you for your attention today. We hope you found this webinar enlightening on refrigerant usage and leak detection patterns. For more information, please follow the links below.